Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a repeating pattern texture in Photoshop. Now I've taken this photo of a textile, part of a cushion, which I want to turn into a repeating pattern that I can use either in Illustrator on some drawings or to render out some textures using 3D rendering software in Rhino or 3ds Max. Now at the moment my pattern is looks like it's repeating but you can see at the edges that there's some slight inconsistencies. And the way I'm going to be testing whether my pattern is repeating correctly or not is using Photoshop's filter and offset function. So if you go to filter, down to other, and to offset, we can actually offset the image by set amount. And you can see here, by doing so, you can then see the seams of where this image starts to line up. And currently, my image isn't correctly lining up at these seams. We've got slight inconsistencies here. So we're going to be using that as a way of testing whether this image is correctly lining up together. So what I'm going to start with is we want to sort of re and distort this image to make sure that all my lines are correctly lining up. To do that I'm going to start by making a series of guides just by going view, new guide and we're going to make one at the vertical position. We're going to make it at 50%. You can actually type in percentages into your guides and it will split the guides at the percentage of your image. So we want one halfway through and we're going to do another horizontal guide at the same, at 50%, like so. Now you can see here, just by doing that, we can see the slight inconsistencies with my center line of my image. The actual kind of middle of the image looks like it's nicely aligned vertically, but the horizontal line isn't quite as aligned. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to select the image and we're just going to use the distort tool just to adjust that slightly. Just to try and get that kind of horizontal alignment lining up. And the sort of more exact you are with this, the better the final result will be. So I think that's pretty much there. And same with the horizontal, I'm just going to actually move the image across just so it aligns on that vertical line as well. Now as well as this I'm going to create a series of guides and we're going to pick the point where we want our image to start repeating and mirroring. Now for this it seems that my kind of crop is slightly against me that we might have needed a bit more of this pattern but that's okay because I think we're just going to change the way the pattern is just to help us with the repetition. So I'm going to add a guide in here one in here because this seems like an area that will be repeating and then we're just going to split this shape in half I think at kind of this point here and add a bit of repetition there and there and the same with the bottom element trying to kind of pick the same point along the bottom to merge it and then we're just going to use the distort tool again just to help us line up each of these Another tool you can use for this is the warp tool, which just sort of helps push the image in at key points just to kind of line up by eye each of these elements. And once you've kind of, I think they're sort of okay, once we've got those, we're going to then crop the image in to my grid lines I've chosen here. Make sure you don't delete any cropped pixels just in case you want to extend it out again and get the image back to where we started like so. So now we've got our central element, let's have a go and have a look on the offset to check how this is lining up. So it seems the vertical, the colours aren't really matching at the moment, but the pattern is pretty much there. We've got a slight inconsistency at this point. And let's check the horizontal. Now I think the horizontal is pretty much lining up. I can't see a seam visibly on this. So we've got this looks to be our seam here. So we've got slight inconsistencies at some points. And I think that's because we haven't kind of deleted those pixels. So let's just copy this and I'm just going to paste it on a new layer. So we're keeping our cropped one there and we've just got a new one here. And we'll just try the offset with this previous one as well. Here we go, so now we can see how this is working. And we'll just put the seam in the middle so we can see it. So I'd say that the 
vertical seam is working well and the horizontal is working quite well too. So we've almost got the image working. I just say that the colours are just slightly off and the kind of upper portion here seems a lot darker than the portion down here. So we need to just check the colours and sort of make sure these are balanced out correctly. Now, one way of doing this, and I'm just going to cancel that offset, is using the exposure tool. So I'm going to create a new exposure. We're going to brighten up everything like so, and then we're going to, on the mask, I'm just going to hit Control i to invert that mask so it's currently not working. Now what we can do is using the paintbrush tool, changing it to a white paintbrush, we can paint back in the area that we want to expose. And for this, I want to expose the bottom so it's as bright as the top area as well. And same. So we're trying to get a kind of consistent exposure. And a good way to test this is if we do filter and offset, we can check how it's working once we've done. So I'm just going to sort of do it by eye at first. Until I think it's kind of okay. And then we're going to just make a new copy, paste it on, because offset only does one layer at a time. So it won't be able to offset the exposure on the layer simultaneously. So I'm just copying it and pasting it above. And then we'll try that offset again. So it still seems a bit dark. So what we'll do now is we'll just move it down until we can see those seams, like so. And I'm just going to hide my grids now because we've used them. And we're now going to try and tidy up and brighten up this area here. So I know the kind of top part and the bottom part will merge up nicely. So it's just trying to make sure that this seam is correct. So I'm just going to make an exposure and the same thing, I'm going to brighten it up. So I'm just going to make sure we've got a black mask on there. And then just using the eraser tool or the paintbrush, we're just going to brighten that up. until we're kind of matching that brightness. You see as well that my color is slightly off here. It looks a little bit more yellow. So what we can also do is we can make a hue saturation. And I'm just gonna copy that mask from the exposure onto the hue saturation as well. And just desaturate it slightly, just so it matches up a bit more. And once we're kind of happy with the colour, then all we need to do is just tidy up this seam here. And to do that, I'm just going to make a new layer, use my clone stamp tool, and we're just going to kind of take a portion of the image from one and clone stamp it over that edge, like so. Now, if you want to kind of go and tidy up and try and merge these a bit, you can as well. And usually it's just a case of sort of taking bits of the image in to the next one. It might be that you want to kind of get rid of portions or redraw in areas. I'm going to take mine from down here. We'll draw a dot in there. And it's just getting rid of that main seam. Like so. I'm drawing along. And sometimes you kind of have to go back over some pieces to just to retidy them. Making sure that we're kind of lining up these points as we go. And once we've done that, we can then have our overall image. So I'm just going to pause the video and tidy up those seams using that clone stamp tool technique. So there, we've just tidied up that seam. I mean, the more time you spend on it, you can kind of merge up these colours. And sometimes it's a case of just taking a bit of colour from the top and copying it down if you're getting this sort of slight colour inconsistency that we're getting here just to sort of merge them together a bit more. But I think for now that's going to work for kind of how I want it and if we can then go back we can then just copy this image, paste it on top and use that filter tool for offset and just to check it and by the looks of it seems that we've got this repeating 
pattern working nicely now. And that's really it. Once you've got it, it doesn't matter sort of which orientation you save it in. It can be slightly offset because it's a perfectly repeating pattern. I can kind of save it in any form and when I bring it into whether I'm using a 3D rendering software or trying to make a pattern in Illustrator, once I start having that re repetition on the image it will perfectly line up however I choose to do it. So once I've got that we can select that and we can just save it out as a JPEG to use elsewhere. So that was a quick video tutorial in how to make a repeating pattern from a texture or photograph you might have taken. Um, and in the next video we'll be looking at how to turn this repeating pattern into a pattern to use in Illustrator as well. So thank you for watching.